a volatile week in the energy market. We've been talking about this, both West Texas and Brent crude rising more than 3% on the week. Joining us now, Bob McNally, Rapidan Energy Group founder and president. Bob, you just heard us talking about energy stocks, but I do want to start with the underlying commodity. And an interesting week in which we finally had things sort of moving the needle out of the Mideast, which has not been happening consistently over the course of this conflict. The market seeming to take seriously the idea of Iran retaliating against Israel. Talk to me about how it's being perceived and kind of how it could play out. Thanks, Julie. You know, you're right. Traders understand that the real bullish oil market risk from the Middle East is about Iran. It's not about Gaza. It's not even about the Red Sea. It's about Iran. And you're right, until this week, traders have pretty much shrugged off what we call Iran contagion risk. Since early November, what happened in early November? The, the Iranian uh, proxy Hezbollah came out and said, look, we're not gonna open up a second front. So when everyone said, okay, Iran's best friend in Lebanon, Hezbollah, is not gonna open up a second front, traders looked the other way. But that stopped this week when Israel attacked a building in a diplomatic compound. And now, for the first time since early November, the market is pricing in, you know, the big one, uh, the, a direct conflict between Israel and Iran, which there's a small chance that could always bring in the United States were that to kick off. So now it's getting real in the oil markets. Bob, I'm interested when oil becomes, in your opinion, kind of a problem for the Fed. You're looking at Brent here uh, at 91. D does it become a problem, Bob? It, you know, is it is it 95? Is it 100 and staying there? How do you think about it? You know, I'm not uh, the best uh, macro Fed watcher, so I won't claim any expertise there. But from my general experience, I think if it's these levels at 95, 100 dollars are going to stay stick for a while. That's going to be a concern. But remember, the Fed's worried about inflation, and that's consumer goods, and those are crack spreads. So a lot of it is the refining capacity. Are we going to have a stormy summer? Uh, is the retail price of gasoline going to head back to $4 a gallon? It's now a little over $3.50. You know, so I think they're going to be looking at both the crude oil market, the refining market. And if we sort of shift to where we're not in that $70, $80 crude market everyone was thinking about, and we're going to $95 or $100 or higher, and that sticks around, that's going, to, that's going to affect inflation break-evens, investor sentiment, positioning, and that's got to worry the Fed. It's got to slow them down on those, on those cuts. What is the likelihood of that happening, Bob, that kind of price action, especially if we don't see an Iran you know, sort of flare up here? So if you assume no big increase in geopolitical risk, our models, I think consensus is more or less thinking crude oil prices are fairly valued in the high 80s, $90 range, right? I think it can stay there for a few years. I think we're in the foothills of a multi-year structural cycle that will be very bullish XLE and everything else. But the next year or two, we're probably fairly valued. The downside risk is a recession. That's a known price killer. So there you have it. Um, I think if uh, geopolitical risk comes into the picture, and we think it will, we think there is much more upside, at least 10 more dollars upside, just to the perceived risk uh, of a conflict with Iran. This is not over. Um, then I think we go higher still, but I think it's more of a blip back down, and then we position for a structural bull move later this decade. And Bob, what about gasoline at the pump prices? We've had some other strategists say to us that in the past, when prices have gotten to a certain point, consumers have said, well, we're not going to drive as much. And then you've seen the, the prices pull back a little bit. Where, do you think that's the case? And if so, where is that sort of sweet spot, or where is the upper limit? Yeah, so you know, gasoline prices, what we call, and demand is sticky, right? Because you don't have a choice. You almost have to buy it. If chicken gets too expensive, you buy beef. Gasoline prices are up. You still got to drive to work. So you need to see something like, uh, Julian, 2022, record high prices of $5 a gallon suddenly on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We get something like that. I think then you see the consumers start to pull back suddenly. But otherwise, the demand doesn't really respond respond much, again, because people have no choice but to drive to school, to work, et cetera. So I think what you usually see on the macro side is consumer sentiment starts to get bummed out. Consumer confidence in readings go down. They start spending less at Chipotle and other things. They're still buying the gasoline, but they, the consumer sentiment weakens and consumption. I think that's what worries folks about a recession risk. And Bob, a question about China as well. You know, the economy over there has been shaky, but then maybe some recent data points showing things maybe potentially perking up. How, does, how do you think about China and how does that play into your outlook, Bob? 
huge factor, Josh. I mean, macro factors are driving oil uh, to a great degree, and half of that at least is China. And as you mentioned, we've had some surprisingly strong PMI and other data from China, right? They're throwing money at the problem. We think domestic demand is still weak, but you know, government can shower money on, on, on investment and so forth, capital expenditures. So that has contributed to the uplift we had in crude. It's not the only thing. Demand readings are strong. Even in Europe, gasoline demand is doing okay. Uh, inventories are starting to draw. So that, that positive macro picture in China since say January has definitely been a part of sort of the firming in oil fundamentals recently. Um, and Bob, you mentioned energy stocks. We talked about how the, they've been sort of playing catch up as of late. If you were bullish on energy prices, are you sort of automatically bullish on energy stocks continuing that, that sort of catch up also? Absolutely. Again, we have huge risk. I tell folks, we are one bad OPEC plus meeting or one recession away from $20 crude and all of energy stocks getting hosed. There is enormous risk in the market this year and next, okay? But notwithstanding that, if we avoid a recession, if OPEC plus keeps it together, which I think they will, then I think we have a once in a generation light uh, opportunity to position for a structural boom, uh, boom market in oil. We exited a bust phase from 2015 to 2021. They're always followed by boom phases. I think the market is still diluted a little bit about how quickly EVs are gonna kill demand. So I think people are gonna wake up and, and smell the gasoline, if you will, and realize we're gonna be a lot thirstier for transportation fuels. And when that happens, everyone's gonna realize we're undervested. And anyone who's long, you know, sort of oil and gas uh, is going to do very well, I believe. Bob, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Thanks for having me. You too. Thank you.